welcome to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a look inside video on the Monitor Audio Bronze 100. One of the reasons why I purchased this speaker is because Monitor Audio took a bookshelf speaker and then shoehorned an eight inch driver into it. How cool is that? So today, we're gonna to go over the cabinet construction, the TS parameters of the driver, and then we're gonna take a look at the crossover network. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this big 8 inch driver and it's held in by a single, I'll show you here, 5 millimeter Allen bolt. So once I undo this, I'm hoping the driver will just come right out. How cool is that? Next I'm going to remove the four screws that hold the terminal cup in place. Now let's see if there's any ferromagnetic parts being used in the signal path on this terminal cup. Nothing so far, which is good. Oh. So, so it looks like they're using steel nuts as well as a steel terminal. So both of these are made of steel, but these could easily be replaced by removing the screws, replacing them with brass, and then buying new aftermarket terminals as well. The terminal cup being used on the Bronze 100 are pretty nice for this price range. The gold plated terminals on the back have a nice solid feel to them, and they can be used to buy amp or buy wire the speakers if you choose to do so. In my opinion, the terminal cups on the Bronze 100 are much better than the ones included on the Focal Aria 906 that I reviewed last month. The reason I say this is the plastic that is being used on the Bronze 100 is much thicker and has a much more solid feel than what is being used in the Aria 906. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, even the Aria 906, which retail for $2,200 a pair, have ferromagnetic parts being used in the signal path. To me, the coolest aspect of these bookshelf speakers is the 8-inch driver that Monitor Audio shoehorned into the cabinet. Even though these have an 8-inch driver, surprisingly, the bass wasn't as powerful as I was hoping for. I'll talk more about this as well as my listening impressions in my review video, which should be out next month. The cone is made from a material that Monitor Audio calls C-CAM, which comprises of ceramic coated aluminum and magnesium. The other interesting part about this woofer is that Monitor Audio is not using a speaker basket made from stamped steel or cast aluminum. Instead, they have opted to use a plastic composite material. This is the first time I have seen a plastic composite basket being used in this price range. Surprisingly, a plastic composite material is much better at controlling resonance than a stamped steel basket, meaning there is less ringing. But I am also worried about the longevity and rigidity of a plastic composite basket versus a steel or die cast basket. I'm guessing Monitor Audio chose to use a plastic composite basket to primarily reduce manufacturing costs. As for the anatomy of the mid bass driver, it appears to be using a two inch overhung voice coil and the former appears to be made from paper. Both the lead wires and voice coil are made from copper instead of copper clad aluminum, which is refreshing to see. Monitor Audio is also using a vented bob until the trapped air has a place to vent during long strokes. Now it all makes sense on why Monitor Audio is using a long threaded rod to mount the speaker from the rear baffle. I think this is primarily done to add additional support for the plastic composite basket, so it doesn't crack or break during shipping. I also believe this design might have some benefits to reduce cabinet resonances, because it ties the front and back baffle together, creating more mass, which in theory should reduce resonances. Now let's see how much this driver weighs. This driver came in at 3 pounds and 12.7 ounces on my scale. I'm not surprised by this because I'm sure the plastic composite basket shaved a lot of weight from this driver. For reference, the 6.5 inch driver from a B&W 705S2 weighs more at 3 pounds and 13.5 ounces and a 6.5 inch driver from a Heiko Aurora 700 came in at 2 pounds and 9.1 ounces. 
Here are the TS parameters that I measured using my Dayton Audio DATS V3. The resonant frequency of the woofer is just a hair under 40 hertz, which is impressive for a bookshelf speaker that has a footprint that is just a tad bigger than my Kef Q350s. In most cases, a lower resonant frequency, or FS, indicates that a woofer would be better for low frequency reproduction than a woofer with a higher resonant frequency. However, there are other parameters that can affect the overall speaker's performance, so that's why I said in most cases. The inductance from the voice coil measured at 0.5881 millihenries. Inductance is also an important variable to look at because higher inductance voice coils can be a major source of harmonic distortion. Speaker Q will tell us how well a speaker will sound and perform. Speaker Q came in at 0.4233, which tells me this speaker is decently damped. The Bronze 100 shares the same 1 inch gold colored dome tweeter made from CCAM that the rest of the Bronze lineup use. This tweeter is surrounded by Monitor Audio's Uniform Dispersion Waveguide, which supposedly improves the response and also helps with time alignment with the woofer. Unfortunately, the tweeter is a bit hard to see because it's covered by a non-removable cover that is pierced with a complex pattern of hexagon shaped holes. I didn't even bother to try to remove the tweeter from the front baffle. The engineer that designed this mount has got to be a sadist. For some reason, Monitor Audio mounted the tweeter from inside the cabinet with four screws. By doing this, it makes it nearly impossible to see what you are doing. So removing the tweeter will have to be done completely by feel, and unfortunately, I didn't have the time to dedicate to its removal. Here are the measurements from the tweeter after performing an impedance sweep using my Dayton Audio DATS V3. I really enjoyed the sound that this tweeter makes. It was full of detail and depth, but I'll talk more about this in my review video, which I will have out in a few months. This tweeter has a pretty low resonant frequency of 995 Hz. The crossover on the Bronze 100 isn't that bad for such an affordable set of bookshelf speakers. It's definitely much better than the basic no frills first order crossover design that I found in my Kef Q350s. In my opinion, the quality of the parts on the Bronze 100 crossover are very similar to the parts used in the Focal Aria 906, which is a set of bookshelf speakers that retail for $2,200 per pair. While there isn't anything super great or fancy being used in this crossover design, the sum of the parts seem to work pretty well together. Monitor Audio is using a mixture of polyester film and electrolytic capacitors in the crossover, along with a mixture of air core and a low loss laminated steel core inductor. I'm starting to notice that Monitor Audio is a company that prides itself in the small details. In a world where copper clad aluminum cable is thriving at this price point, it's nice to see oxygen free cable being used for the internal wiring. Monitor Audio refers to the internal cabling as pure flow, silver plated, oxygen free copper. I'm a big fan of companies who go the extra mile to ensure they deliver a quality product at a fair price. Nice job Monitor Audio. Wow, the exterior fit and finish on these cabinets are one of the nicest I have seen at this price point. The fake wood veneer is pretty real looking up close and feels nice to the touch. In comparison, the cabinets on the Bronze 100 are a few notches above my Kef Q350 cabinets. The fake vinyl veneer looks like the real deal and the decor on the front baffle gives the Bronze 100 a nice upscale look. I would almost go as far as to say that the cabinet construction is in line with the Bowers & Wilkins 606S3s, which currently sells for $1,100 per pair. No doubt, Monitor Audio's attention to detail should pay off for value-minded consumers. Simply put, you get a lot of value for your money with the Bronze 100. The inside of the cabinet isn't much different from the outside either. Monitor Audio did a nice job damping the inside cabinet with thick, dense foam which is cut to size and glued into place in all of the key areas. The cabinet even has a brace in the center which ties all of the side walls of the cabinet together to further reduce vibrations. The thickness of the center brace came in at 5 eighths of an inch thick. The front baffle is made from plastic composite material and is just under 1 inch in thickness. The rear cabinet wall measured in at 5 eighths of an inch thick, and I assume the sides are the same. The rear cabinet port measured 6 inches in length and is 2 inches wide. The port is flared on both ends, but the flaring on the inside is very minimal. 
but I don't think that's a problem because I didn't hear any port chuffing. In my opinion, the cabinet construction and attention to detail is above average for this price point. Monitor Audio claims their frequency response on the Bronze 100 is from 37Hz to as high as 30,000Hz, and I completely believe that. When I tested the port tuning on the Bronze 100, it came in at a tad over 36Hz. And that's my look inside video on the Monitor Audio Bronze 100. The Monitor Audio Bronze 100 is a bookshelf speaker that I would have no problem recommending to family and friends. Please let me know what you think of the Monitor Audio Bronze 100 by leaving a comment down below. So long and happy listening.